Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. I was preparing a video on calibrating your 3D printer, specifically using a PID calibration to calibrate the temperature of your hot end and your print bed, using an extruder calibration to calibrate the filament extrusion uh, rates, the number of steps that you turn your stepper motor to extrude your filament. In order to do that, you have to send G-code to your printer. Now, G-code is the language, the human readable language of codes that you send to your printer in order to tell it to move in a particular direction. It's also the way you tell it to save things to its local memory called EEPROM memory. Historically, I've used Octoprint to control my printer, but not everyone's ready to install Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi, to set it all up in order to be able to send commands for calibration to your printer. So another very, very good alternative is Matter Control by Matter Hackers. And I've done a number of videos on Matter Control. But that's a pretty big program. It works great but it's a pretty big program. I was looking for something really simple and easy that I could use from any machine. I have a new toy here. I have a uh, Windows Surface Go. It's sort of a combination uh, laptop tablet. And I'll explain why a Mac guy, this is a MacBook Pro, I have Macs behind me, why a Mac guy buys a Surface Go in another video. But I also have my Mac here and I wanted something I could use easily to control these printers. I could take with me. It was lightweight. It was easy to use. So I did some digging around, and I found something remarkable. I found there's an app that you can load into Chrome. It's a Chrome app that will work on a computer. It'll also work on a Chromebook. Very interesting. You can use it on a Chromebook, and you can use that to control your 3D printer. Specifically, it's called the G-Code Sender. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. So let's begin by talking just a bit more about G-Code. Let's look here at this picture on the screen together. Basically, if you want to create an object to print on a 3D printer, you model it in a 3D modeling program. This is a review for most of you, but I may have some new readers. Use a slicer to convert it to G-code. And let's look at this next picture. This is an example of what G-code looks like. It's a series of codes. A G28 homes the printer, sends it to the home position. A G1 is used to move the printhead of the printer to a particular printer position. And in this case, it's moving to an X. Remember, we have an X, a Y, and a Z on a Cartesian printer. It's moving it to an X position of 10, a Y position of 0, and a Z position of 0. That would be the first layer. It's printing at 3,000 millimeters per minute and it's going to extrude 0 0.04 millimeters of filament. So that's a very simple example of G-code. Now, on this picture, you'll see there are a whole series of G-codes that really are not about printing. They're about calibrating or configuring your printer. You can use an M303 in order to set the um, rate at which your printer reaches a temperature for the extruder in the bed, and how it maintains that temperature. I'm gonna do a whole video about this type of calibration. You can do an M92 in order to set the number of steps your stepper motor turns to extrude a particular length of filament. You can use M500 commands to display these save values or store new save values. And M28 homes the printer M29 will run your Z probe, your probe to set the Z offset, the Z height, the height from the nozzle to the bed of your printer. In order to be able to type these commands into a computer, you need a way to connect your computer to your printer. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I've often used Doctor Print or Matter Control for that.
Today we're going to look at something very, very different. We're going to look at using a Chrome browser to control your printer. Now, Chrome is a browser provided as an open source, as a free product from Google. There are parts of it that are open source. In fact, there are parts that are not. And it runs on Macs, it runs on PCs, it runs on Linux, and it is, in essence, the environment for a Chromebook. Within the Chrome browser environment, there's a concept of applications. These are things that you develop for Chrome. You have to have Chrome on your machine, but you can run a standalone applications. Google has dropped support, sometime in 2017, they dropped support officially for Chrome applications on any machine other than a Chromebook. And they announced that they weren't gonna be available in the Google Web Store any longer, and they're not. But they also announced that at some point they're going to stop working. They've sort of backed off that and stopped talking about that. So if you know how to find a Chrome app, the same apps you use on a Chromebook. And one way to find them is to go into the web store from a Chromebook and you'll see all the apps, you can get the URLs. But if you know how to find them, you still can install those Chrome apps on any computer that runs Chrome. Now, if we look at this screen, we'll see there are two URLs. The URL on the top, that very long URL, is the URL for the Chrome G-Code Sender app. Um, I'll include that in the description of this video so you can just click on it in the description. Another way to find that is to go to the second URL, just go into GitHub and search for Chrome G-Code Sender. You'll go to a page and there's a reference to the top URL on this page. That's really the only hard thing we're going to have to do today. So let me show you how you would actually install this in Chrome. Once you start up Chrome, if you go to the three top dots on the top right-hand corner and you click on them, you'll have an option that says More Tools. Mouse over to Extensions and click on Extensions. And what you'll see here are all of the extensions that I've loaded into Chrome. Now, a Chrome extension is a piece of code, it's written in JavaScript, that works with the Chrome browser in conjunction with web pages. A Chrome application is a piece of code written in the Chrome environment, written in JavaScript, that can work standalone. Now, Google needs to support these for Chromebooks. If we know the right URL, we can install one of these Chromebook apps on Windows or on a Mac. So now, in order to install this, I need that URL. So I went to the description on the video. I actually, in my case, went to the slide deck. I copied that long URL and I'm going to paste it into the address bar on my browser and hit return. And you'll see it comes up to an area called Home Apps. Now, if you try to go to that area directly from a Chromebook, it works. If you try to go to that area from a Windows machine or a Mac, it does not. But once you get there, you can see that we have access to this application. Over 8,000 people have installed this application. So I'm gonna click here on Add to Chrome and then click Add App. And we'll see here now there's something called G-Code Sender. Now, how do I get to that again? Well, I type in Chrome colon slash slash apps and you'll see all of the apps installed. Now you see, I already have other apps in here because Google, once again, they're still supporting these apps because they haven't developed alternatives for them yet. So I'm going to click on G-Code Sender, and now I could actually close my Chrome, regular Chrome window. I'm going to size this window up a little bit so we can see it. So this is in essence a standalone app and I'm going to go to settings. So the first thing I have to do is I have to tell it where my printer is attached. We're going to use this Ender 5. Let me go ahead and turn the Ender 5 on. Now, before I go ahead and plug the Ender 5 in, I'm gonna show you a little trick. If I go to ports here and I click on it, we'll see the ports that currently this application can see. 
Now, it did not include a serial or a COM port. So let me go and plug this in. Okay, now it's plugged in. I'm going to exit from the app. I'm going to run the app again. And let me size the window so you can see it. I'm going to go to settings and I'm gonna to go to ports again. And you'll see there are additional ports here. In the case of a Windows machine, those will show up as COM ports on this Surface Go. Um, it shows up as COM3. In the case of a Mac, it'll show up as USB modem port. And we wanna select the one that has a TTY on it. And then I'm gonna change the speed to 115,200, because I know that's the speed that the Ender line likes. I'm gonna click on Save and Connect. We're now connected from Chrome to this printer. How do I know that? Well, I can go to the Control Panel, and because the Ender 5 is the opposite of most printers, the print bed moves up and down instead of the Z-axis moving up and down, uh, these controls here are inverted. So plus is minus and minus is plus on the Z-axis. So let me go ahead and turn on another new toy that I have. I have an Osmo Pocket, and I'm going to very quickly um, start a recording so that you can see this actually running. And now I'm going to move the Z-axis down a little bit. There we go. So each time I click on this here, it moves down. Now what's very nice is it's showing me the actual commands in the command window here that are running. So it's actually taking and moving down with the G1 command, Z10. Now, let me go ahead and home this printer. So I'm gonna send a G28, type that in, click send. And you'll see the printer now is going through all of the steps to home the hot end. Isn't that great? So I can control this printer from Chrome. If I wanted to, I could tell it to extrude filament. I could tell it to print something by, in essence, using it like a manually controlled plotter. Well, folks, I think this is a remarkable find. This is a very, very easy way to control your printer from any copy of Chrome. As I said, I've tried it from Windows machines. I've tried it from Macs. I haven't tried it from a Chromebook yet. I'll have to borrow a Chromebook from one of my grandchildren and give that a try. Folks, if you learned something today, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Share this video with everyone you know who might learn from it. Leave comments um, because I think that's a way we can continue to learn things together.